Hi, this is David Williams. The topic of this video is Carnot Maps. Now, a Carnot Map is a systematic method for simplifying Boolean algebra expressions, but it requires no actual Boolean algebra to do the simplification. It's a, it's a purely graphical method. Now, graphical methods of representing Boolean algebra aren't new. We've looked at truth tables already, but in the past, others have used similar types of methods. For example, Venn diagrams come to mind. The great thing about Carnot Maps is it's a algorithmic simplification. If you follow the steps correctly, you're going to come up with the simplest Boolean algebra expression for a truth table or for a Boolean algebra expression. So to start, let's look at a truth table and the standard method of converting a truth table into a sum of products or product of sums expression. In this case, we'll do sum of products. So what we're looking for in a sum of, to get the sum of products expression is all the rows where the output is equal to one. And then we create a product expression for each one of those rows. So this row would be not A, B, not C. This row would be not A, B, C. This, this row would be A, B, not C. And this last row will be A, B, C. And then we can take that expression and or all of the product terms together. So we get an expression that looks like this. That equals our output. Then the, last, the next thing that we can do is, is do some Boolean algebra simplification. So I can look for some terms in common that I can factor out. So in this term, I've got a not AB. In this term, I've got a not AB that I can factor out. So I have a not AB banded with not C or C. Over here, I've got an AB and an AB term. So I can factor that out. AB banded with not C or C. So that term, not C or C, is equal to 1. Anything ORed with itself is 1. That term is equal to 1. Anything, again, not C or ORed with C. So I have not AB or AB. I can factor the B out of this now. Factor the B out. I'm left here with not A. I'm left here with A. Not A or A. That's equal to 1. So overall, this is simply equal to B. Not super challenging, but you need to know how to do Boolean algebra simplification in order to, to figure out that this truth table can be implemented with simply B. A Carnot map is similar to a truth table in that it has a box entry or an entry in the table for every possible input. But while the truth table, the list of possible entries, is sequential, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, etc., all the way up to 1, 1, 1, the K-map is written so that the input combo for each box only changes by one bit when moving either up, down, left, or right. So I'll show you what I mean. So here's a three-input Carnot map compared to the three-input truth table. Let's say we're trying to represent the same logic function with this three-input Carnot, three Carnot map as we have with this three-input truth table. So you see each one of these blank boxes represents one possible output. And the input for each one of these possible outputs is given by the value of the variable in, in this column. So in this whole row, A will be equal to 0. And then in each one of the columns, the values in B or C are given here. So there's the value of B, there's the value of C. So in this particular box here, this would be where A is equal to 0, B is equal to 0, and C is equal to 0. In this box over here, this is where A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, and C is equal to 0. One thing that should stand out is that as I move from the left to the right, the numbers go from 0, 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 1 to 1, 0. This is called gray code. And the reason that we do this is to make sure that as we move from a box to a box to the right, or to the left, or down, that we're only changing one bit. So here, in this particular box represents A equals 0, B equals 1, C equals 1. If I move to the box to the left, A is still 0, C is still 1, but now B is changed to 0. If I move to the box to the right, A is still 0, B is still 1, and C is changed to 0. So it's only C that changes when I move to the right, and only B of changes if I move to the left. And similarly, it's only A that changes if I move down. So now let's finish off this Carnot map, or K map, by filling in the boxes here corresponding to each one of the outputs that's given in the, in the three input truth table. So this box is 0, 0, 0. 
in the truth table, input 000, zero, zero will give an output of zero. So I can put a zero there. This box represents 001, which is also a zero. This box represents 011, which is a one. Here's 011. This box represents 010. There's 010. It's also a one. This box represents 100, which is a zero. This box represents 101, which is a zero. This box represents 111, which is the last row from the three input truth table. So that's a one. And finally, this box represents the input 110, which is also a one. Now let's see how I can use the Carnot map to solve the same problem as I did with the three input truth table when I was using Boolean algebra simplification. So here's the process of using a Carnot map to determine the simplest sum of products expression. So the first thing to do is to build the Carnot map table, and I've done just that. The second step is to combine the min terms where the min terms equal to one into groups. Now recognize that each one of the boxes represents a min term. So for example, this box here is the min term not A, not B, not C. This box over in the opposite corner is A, B, not C. So find all the, min, all the boxes where the min term is equal to one. The group size that you're creating needs to be a power of two. The group size is gonna end up being either a square or a, rankle, or, or a rectangle. You want to make the group sizes as large as possible. It's allowable for the groups to overlap, and this is actually something to look for, especially when you're making the group sizes as large as possible. There's, there's definitely that, that possibility that the groups will overlap. Groups can stretch around boundaries. So what that means, actually, is that this min term is adjacent to this min term, even though they're on opposite sides of the table. And finally, all the boxes where the min term is equal to 1 need to be in a group. In this particular example here, I only have one group. There's a group of four in the shape of a square. So I can combine those into a group and I've created one group. I've included all of the, all the places where the min term is equal to one. I didn't need to stretch around any boundaries and the group is as large as possible. The third step is to determine the value of the group. And what this involves is looking to see what variable or set of variables is constant in that group. So for each one of the min terms, what variable is it that doesn't change or what variables don't change values no matter which, which box in this group that you're in. In this particular case, if I look at this box, a is equal to zero, b is equal to one, c is equal to one. If I go down here, I see that a is equal to one, b is equal to one, and c is equal to one. So a changes if I go from this box to this box. So a is not part of this group. Also, if I go from this box to this box, I see that C changes. C goes from a 1 to a 0. So C is not going to be the, the, in the value of this group. The only thing that does stay constant is that B is equal to 1 regardless of which min term I'm looking at. So for this particular group, the value of the group is B is equal to 1. I should note that in this example, we only have one group, but it's possible to have multiple groups, of course. Steps four and five are determine the expression for each group and then and all of the expressions together. So there's two steps here, but it's really creating the expression for the overall, overall function. To create the expression for the group, look for the variable and then the value of the variable. If the variable is equal to a one, then it's just that variable. And if the variable is equal to zero, then it's not that variable. So in this case, I only have B equal to one. So the expression for this Carnot map going to be out is equal to b. And now I'm done. If I had multiple expressions, then I would or, or the b with those other expressions. Now I think the best way to learn a little bit more about Carnot maps is to see them in action so that we can go through and look at all of the different possible things that can happen when you're combining min terms. Also we'll look at three input and four input k maps. Um, three input k-maps are quite simple. Four input k-maps are a little bit, uh, they're a little bit more involved, but not too bad. But once you start getting to five or six, six input k-maps, the Carnot map starts to lose its value because the, the number of expressions you're dealing with just to gets unwieldy. All right, here's the first example. And again, I'm going from a three input truth table to my three input Carnot map. So for each one of these boxes, I need to figure out what value to put in the box in the k-map. 
So this is the 0, 0, 0 box. And from the truth table, the value there is a 0. There's the 0, 0, 1 box. Value there is a 0. Here's the 0, 1, 0 box. Value there is a 1. Here's the 0, 1, 1 box. Value there is a 0. The 1, 0, 0 box. Value there is a 1. The 1, 0, 1 box. The value there is a 0. The 1, 1, 0 box. The value there is a 1. And the 1, 1, 1 box. The value there is a 1. The one stumbling block that students often come across is remembering that this is gray counting or gray code counting. Here I'm going 0, 1, then 1, 1. The next step is to group the min terms, making sure that the group size is a power of 2, that I'm making the groups as big as possible. The shape of the groups is going to be a square or a rectangle. The groups are also allowed to overlap. So let's see, I'm looking for groups of 2 or more. There's one group there. Here's another group here. Remember, though, this box is adjacent to this box over here, but I can't include this box with these two because the group size needs to be a power of 2, and if I included it, it would be a power of 3. I mean, it would be a group size of 3. So there would be another box. The, th the third box, or the third group I make, is going to group this guy with this guy. So I kind of lied in saying that the group's group shape is going to be a square or a rectangle because of the overlapping, but this box really is adjacent to this box, so I should be able to draw a square if, that, if I actually was able to draw it adjacent. The next step is to, de is to determine the value of each group. So I'm looking for what stays constant in, within each group. So let's look at this group first. Here I've got a is equal to 1 and a is equal to 1. I've got b is equal to 0, but b is equal to 1, so b is not staying constant. And I've got c is equal to 0, and c is equal to 0. So a is staying at 1, and c is staying at 0 for that particular group. In this group here, again, a is staying at 1. So a is equal to 1 for that group. And then going in, looking at b, b is a 1, b is a 1, so b is staying a 1. But C is 1, C is 0 there, so C is not staying constant. So that group A is equal to 1, and B is equal to 1. Finally, for that group there, B is this is the column where B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0. And going from row to row, A is changing. So that particular column, that particular group, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0. Last two steps, I'm going to determine the expression for each group and then and all the groups together. So this expression, a is equal to 1, so the expression there will be a, c is equal to 0, so it will be not c. This one, a is equal to 1, so it's a, b is equal to 1, so it's b. Here we've got b equal to 1, so b, c equal to 0, so not c. Now I can put all three of the expressions together to give me the output. Out is equal to a not c, ORed with a, b, ORed with b, not c. And this is the simplest sum of products form that I can get this truth table into. And I did it without doing any Boolean algebra simplification. Now let's look at how to do four input k-maps. So we can start here with a four input truth table. The k-map for four inputs is going to be similar for three inputs, but we're going to, going to need a couple more rows because we have that one extra input. And here's what that four input K map looks like. So you note that I've got the split here with A and B, and it's counting from 0, 0 to 0, 1 to 1, 1 to 1, 0, just like the columns did before. And then my other split is CD of 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0. So this box here would be the box where A is equal to 1, B is equal to 1, C is equal to 0, D is equal to 0. The steps for, for using the 4 input Carnot map are the same as with a 3 input Carnot map. First I'm going to build the Carnot map table, from, in this case from the truth table. So at 0, 0, 0, 0, my output is a 1. At 0, 0, 0, 1, my output is a 1. At 0, 0, 1, 0, my output is a 0. At 0, 0, 1, 1, my output is a 0. 
Now I'm just I'm just visually looking over at the truth table here and and taking that value and mapping it over into the K map. At 0, 1, 0, 0, output is a 1. At 0, 1, 0, 1, output is a 1. At 0, 1, 1, 0, the output is a 1. And at 0, 1, 1, 1, the output is a 1. At 1, 1, 0, 0, that's down here, the output is a 0. At 1, 1, 0, 1, the output's a 0. And I can see that the other two are going to be 0 also. Then at 1, 0, 0, 0, it's right there, it's a z output's a 0. At 1, 0, 0, 1, output's a 1. At 1, 0, 1, 1, the output's a 1. And at 1, 0, 1, 0, the output is a 0. Step number two is to combine all the min terms where the min term is equal to one into groups, making sure the trying to get the or getting the groups as large as possible. Uh, they need to be a power of two in size, so one, two, four, eight, etc. There's a group of four. It doesn't look like I can make it any bigger, so there's one group. There's a group of two, but look, I can overlap my groups and make that a group of four. It's much better to make as large a group as possible. So there's my second group. And then I've got another group here to make a group of two. This one also overlaps with this, this box, but I could do that grouping, but I'd still be left over with this one, and I can't include it in the grouping of these two because that would be a group of three. So there's my third group. So now that I've made all my groupings, I want to determine the value of each group. Let's look at down at this group here. You want to see what of the input variables stays the same and what changes. So in this group here, this is in the row where a is equal to 1 and b is equal to 0. So a is staying the same at 1, b is staying the same at 0. What about c and d? Are they staying the same or, or, or are they changing? You see here that c is a 0 and then it's a 1, so c is changing. But d is a 1 and d is a 1, so d stays the same. So in that particular group, this group right here, a was a 1, b is a 0, d is a 1. What about this long group here, this long row? This is, this is in the row where a is equal to 0 and b is equal to 1. So a is staying constant at 0, b is staying constant at 1. But c and d are changing. We're going across all the columns of c and d, so c and d are definitely changing. Now in this group of 4 right here, we have going from this row to this row, we have a equals 0, a equals 0. So a is staying the same. We have b equals 0, b equals 1, so b changes. Now looking at the columns, going from this column we have c equals 0, c equals 0. So c is constant at 0. And we have d equals 0, d equals 1, so d changes. Now taking the values for each group, determine what the product expression is. So a is equal to 1, so that'll just be a. B is equal to 0, so that'll be not B. D is equal to 1, so that'll be D. For this group, A is equal to 0, so that will be not A. B is equal to 1, so that is B. Finally up here, this group, that group right there, A is equal to 0, so the expression will be not A, ended with, well, C is equal to 0, handed with not c. Now we can or all three of these terms together and we get a not b d ORed with not a b ORed with the expression up here not a not c and that's the simplest sum of products expression that I can get to implement the logic shown in this truth table. I think I'll wrap it up there for this video so I don't get too long, but that gives you a good introduction to what Carnot maps are and how to build and simplify or use Carnot maps to simplify Boolean algebra expressions from truth tables. There's a couple more things that I want to do, but I'll save it for another video, and those are building Carnot maps from Boolean algebra expressions, what to do when you have incompletely specified functions, in other words, when you have a truth table where some outputs you don't really care what value they are, 
And finally, how to make a product of sums expression from a Carnot map. So I hope you learned a little bit, and I'll see you in the next video.